All right, hello guys. All right, let's start off with some housekeeping. I am speaking from my heart. You should know that I am not receiving any promotion from this video. I'm not receiving monetization at all. Just speaking from my heart and the excitement, how far and how long this software has come. How far, how long? Well, it's really advanced and it's pretty impressive. Yes, all for free. The next thing, if you're a brand new learner, you're saying, what is this all about? I'm not a composer. How is this gonna help my piano playing? All right, so I wanna clear up some things right away. One, names are interchangeable. A lot of times, MuseScore 4 is also called MuseScore Studio. A little confusing. Now, there are two sidekicks that I'm going to talk about a bit. One is the MuseScore.com site, which is a, uh, that's where I get really excited about. It is a search engine for music, and you've got to take advantage of that. That part, though, you can download some of it for free, but there is a yearly fee. And I'm not here promoting it, but I'm telling you, it's worth every buck. It really is. It's not that expensive. Major publishers are getting on that site, and they also have their music, which I think has been published through MuseScore. So we're going to show that. The other one is MuseScore Hub, which I talk about a bit when we're installing it. So here we go. On the menu, the video is going to be um, me explaining the confusion, which I just did, MuseScore 4. And then there's the MuseScore.com, which is like a giant library of music and a lot of piano music, a lot. And there's also then the MuseScore Hub. So we're going to put a lot of time into the app itself to show you some things, but also then I'm going to go to MuseScore.com and download some easy piano music and show you what you can do. I'm also going to show some skills on uh, how to change notes or go up an octave, change a key, add dynamics, some stuff that you might not be interested in plugging in the keyboard. And I mean this keyboard, but it will be worth your time because that's part of the software notating it. This is not a composition lesson. This is just me like, you might want to take advantage of this free software and then also check out musecore.com. All right, please reach out ask questions, let me know what you think, all that good stuff. Let's begin. All right, so what you wanna do is type in in your browser of choice, MuseScore 4 download, and you should see this come up. And this is where some newer users might get confused, is when you download, obviously you're gonna pick your operating system, but you also have MuseScore Studio without MuseHub. If you don't click that, when you click the bigger tab, you will also get the Muse Hub, which I recommend. That's gonna be another video. You know what, I've decided to show a little bit of Muse Hub because there are some learners out there that wanna keep things super simple, so you might not need it. But I wanna show some things that are really cool. I use it on a limited basis. All right, so I opened up Muse Hub. That is the logo down there. And now I'm gonna to go to Muse Sounds. And the reason I'm going to Muse Sounds is we're going to type in piano and you can update your piano sound if you wish. And there's a few reasons why, which we'll get into later. So I think I need to just press enter and it should come up. All right. You can see if it's free and that dollar, that green sign means feel free to leave a tip if you like. Here we have different sounds. I'm going to go to felt piano, but you can see these are prices. Ten bucks, pretty much five bucks, twenty bucks. Uh, they have reviews, you can read them. For what it's worth, piano libraries can be extremely expensive. So like a $5 purchase for a cool piano sound might be great. I know you're just using this for sheet music, but now and then when you're downloading another piece of music and you want to hear how it sounds, you might want to update the piano sound. I'm a, I'm, I'm a geek because I do composing and stuff, so it's well worth sometimes a bit of a sound upgrade. I just clicked on Felt Piano. This one you have a sample, a preview. So I'm going to play that. Soft. And you can also scroll down, read descriptions. You can also read reviews and everything like that. So that might be of benefit for some of you. And the other one is if you click on apps, 
There's a whole um, bunch of different apps, but this is an app that I've, I've used for a, uh, a while ago. I haven't used it lately, but it's Audacity. And this is a pretty cool program where you can record your piano playing directly into the computer. I'm more than happy to show any of you. If you if I get enough interest, I'll be happy to do that. But there's some apps that are free and you can read through it. You can go ahead and try different apps. Some of the apps, it's for a giant um, audience. So it's different age group oriented. I'm just gonna touch upon that much. Oh, and uh, the notifications, I do have to do an update and it tells you what they're gonna be fixing. And I'll also show you how to do the update in the software itself. But I wanted to touch upon it because some of you might be like, you know what, it's too fancy. I don't need all of that. Um, but it's there, a lot of cool sounds, a lot of the sounds are free, might be helpful. And some of you, if you use this more than I do, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, you can explore and try different things. As far as I know, the elements are like loop packs, people who are composing or need different background music and whatnot. That's getting very popular. So after, depending on your operating system, click on download and then follow the prompts. It's fairly easy. And then what's cool about many softwares like MuseScore 4, they also have a little tour so you can go through that. But we're gonna go in and talk about some things that you wanna do right away for your piano playing and making notes bigger or pitch names, important things like rhythms, changing things, uh, changing font size and all that. So now after you've installed it, the next portion will be showing you around a little bit and giving you some quick tips that you can apply to your piano playing. All right, we're gonna launch MuseScore like it's your first time. And after you launch it, it should look like this. It might be, oh, and I'm, I get messages for new versions. I don't always update until I'm done with a project. Sometimes you can get a little surprise. All right, so it could look like this, but I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna click on new score and you can look for piano either in the family of instruments or just type in piano, which is cool. You can see all the different pianos. I'm gonna just select the first one and then you must select the arrow key. So you know what you're doing here. And if you don't select the arrow key, then it won't be in your score. You can click done or you can follow the prompts. I'm gonna keep it in C major and you can title it and I'll show you how to title it in another way in a little bit. MuseScore learning. Uh, speaking of learning, there's so much to do on this app. So reach out. I'm going to just touch upon some bigger things that you can get into. All right. Time signature. Just click on the box and let's go to three. Uh, no, not today. Uh, three, four. All right. That's done. And then you just click off of it. Tempo. Uh, keep that. But if you want to show the tempo right away, click that box and pick up measures if you want to do and also you can create more than just a pickup note you can have like a 2b pickup if you like but i'm not going to select that all right so we can come back and fix this in a little bit click done and then the squirrel will load all right so let's say if you want to change the title all you have to do is double click on it command or control a and then you can title it something else and you can get rid of the subtitle by simply selecting all of it and then delete. Let's go ahead and talk about the palette. The palette is where you execute different tools that you want, you might wanna change. So right away you wanna uh, create a transposition. We will go to the key signature and we're gonna drag and drop and put one sharp in there. And then if you don't want it, you can just control or command Z. The control thing is for PC users. All right, let's go ahead and add in some notes. I'm just gonna create a scale, a C major scale. So just doing basic stuff like that, you'll learn a lot of different things about the software. I'm gonna press the letter N for input, and then I'm gonna press C. And the reason it's a quarter note, that's by default. If you take your mouse and hover over it, you'll see the different numbers demonstrate what duration you want. All right, so I want middle C, as you know, because we're all learning. That is not middle C, so what I'm gonna do is go back and I'm gonna press Command or Control. After you do that, down arrow, boom, all done. And then move the cursor to beat two. I'm gonna just go ahead and keep it all quarter notes, so now I'll build the scale. And later on, I will go ahead and demonstrate how you can use a MIDI keyboard and add in notes uh, and then there's gonna be big questions about can you record and do this and that kind of opens up a whole other 
long video, uh, but I can definitely show you some input stuff. What I'm gonna do now is go back, if you wanna navigate notes, just arrow key again. If you wanna navigate measure by measure, command key down, there you go. So now we've put some notes in, we've done some very basic stuff. All right, this is really cool. Let's go ahead and talk about the notes that you see and then the notes that you would see on the piano keyboard. So we're gonna press P for piano. And now I'm gonna just move my arrow key. Once I move, you'll see the note light up, or you should. There we go. See at the bottom there, D. And I don't know if I can um, untoggle this. Sometime, let's see, undock, that's the word, cool. So now I should be able to move it around. That's better for the viewer. So again, this is really good for new learners or even um, music that's difficult. If you wanna see that C4, do you know it's that's middle C and then going up a scale. So you can see how things are visually lined up with the note you're playing. You can come up with your own exercises if you want to. All right, so now I'm gonna just shove this back here or I can press P again to get rid of it. And then if you bring it back, it starts back at the bottom. All right, that is a cool feature. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, pitch names. So for instance, uh, let's say you have some tricky notes you're learning in a piece and you're not too sure. I'm gonna go, well, that's a little carried away, my excuse there. All right, so that's some ledger lines going on. Let's say you wanna get the note names down. There's a few ways to do it. Uh, the first way is you can highlight the whole phrase, and this is pretty common. Then you can right mouse click. You with me? Staff part properties. We're almost there. And then if my memory is right, um, we're gonna go to advanced style properties. Awesome. Note head scheme. And there's another quicker way to do this too, but if you wanna do the whole piece, you can go ahead and after note head scheme, click down, you'll see pitch names. So now you have pitch names in every single note head. We're gonna click apply. We have that. That can be pretty useful, but I wouldn't get too carried away because you're just gonna be reading the letter, not the note. Uh, you've heard me say that before. What I'm gonna do is get rid of all that. And now let's say if I just want to get one pitch notated. So I'm not sure what that is, but one way you can figure it out is watch this. Back to the piano and you can see it's a D there, so then you can figure it out there. But let's say you're gonna print it out and you're just not sure if you're gonna remember it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna keep that note highlighted and put myself on the spot here. I'm gonna see if I can remember this. I believe we're gonna to go to a note head. So we have a basic palette. What we need to do is add palettes. And then after add palettes, we're gonna click this plus sign and it's note heads. Then we go back to palettes here and then we're gonna look for note heads. All right, I'm glad I'm reviewing this. So if you wanna just label one pitch for a note head, like the ledger lines are saying, you click on note head and then you're gonna to go to properties. We're not there yet, but it's not that hard. It's just new. We're gonna go, we're gonna click on note. Oh, go to show more, so no head scheme. All right, so we're gonna go to pitch names, but the one that's highlighted is D. You might have to pause and go back and figure that out, but that can be really useful if you're getting into reading and you're playing a lot of ledger lines and all that. But remember the new trick I just found out, press P and then you can highlight the notes. I love that. So. We have talked about that, but something really important for piano, because we're reading two clefs at times, sometimes more, sometimes less, is getting the notes on the page, getting them big enough so you can read it. That's really important. I know my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so what I wanna do is get the notes bigger. Right, let's talk about getting notes bigger, uh, just a bigger font so we can read it when we print it out. We're gonna go ahead and go back to staff, part properties. And I'll review this. We're gonna go and now look at the scale. The scale, we got 100%. Let's just add like, that's a good amount, 105%. We're gonna click OK. So you can see it got bigger because this is a video. I will go ahead and exaggerate. So back to the scale. And I will do 
crazy amount. That's much bigger, so that can be very useful. Now let's talk about getting less measures on a line. There's a few things you can do. One, I'll do this now to simplify things. We're gonna go to Format, and we're gonna go to Add Remove System Breaks. And it says here, break systems every four measures. We'll do that. So we have every four. So you can clean things up and make it bigger. All right, so we navigated the palette, navigated about how to move basic notes up and down. The change notes, as far as key signatures, we talked about the palette. We talked about naming pitches as a whole. And as a friendly reminder, you right mouse click, go to staff part properties, and then you click on advanced style, note head scheme. I just need to review to make sure I'm clear. Keep that as it is. And then we got fancy if you're dealing with high pitches and how to name that. And there's a few steps to that where you have to go to the pa uh, excuse me, yeah, palettes and then to note heads and then to properties. And then you have to go to show more. But once you know how to do it, you're done. And then you can save it. But most importantly, I think what was good to geek out on is the piano and you can undock it and then you can go ahead and play through it if you wish. But now what I want to do is go to musecore.com and download something. All right, here we are at musecore.com. I have already logged in. I've picked an easier piano piece. Let's see if we recognize it. Still tricky because the tempo is fast. What we're going to do is download it. You can print it, by the way, right away if you want. But I'm going to download it. I'm going to download the MuseScore. So you're going to see that. I'm going to open up the folder. Click on that, and it should open up. It will give you some prompts like, hey, this was done in an older version, so we're going to update the font and all that. That's fine. To save time, though, I already have it open. All right, what we can do now is change the tempo. And you can do that on the cloud as well. But some basic things that might help you. And we're gonna have it at much slower at 100 beats. We're gonna go ahead and just click on our note, press the space bar for play. And then if you wanna figure out where the keys are on the keyboard, press P for piano. And then I'm gonna start here again. And then it should light up. There we go. It's showing you all the notes, which is cool. And it also plays the tide note. And now we're on the Anna 4, second measure. Shows you those notes. It has a little shade there. Now, let's say you don't want to play all these notes. You're going to work on basic right-hand chords, and you're just going to play the outer notes. You can go ahead and highlight that, and then just delete it. And then you can go to the next note, and for me, I press the Option key down, and then I just delete that. So that could be tedious, but remember, music has a lot of repetition in it. So once you find the repetition, you can copy and paste. In this case, let's say I do want to copy and paste a phrase or an exercise. I click on the full measure. I have the Shift key down. I go to the second measure, and then it's just like a word processor. Control C or Command C, and then you can paste that where you like. You can also play it back to suit you like. I know some of us want to get the original down, which is fine, but you can definitely simplify and then add to it. Oh, another quick tip is if you want to change what you downloaded, you can have two versions of the file. Just save it as downloaded song X, whatever you're doing, and then downloaded arrangement. So this section here, measure five, is pretty hard to play. For a lot of repetitive notes, a lot of straining going on. So you could go ahead and you just got that E, that E in the right hand over and over again, and this is repetitive, but it's pretty fast. So you might be kind of playing choppy. So you can go ahead and get rid of the middle note. And one way to do that is I have a mouse clicking here, and I have the command key down, and then I can press delete. You can do that. 
If you want to make the notes bigger, I showed you before, you can go ahead and go to staff, part properties, right mouse click and make that bigger. I didn't talk about slurs or accents, but you can do a lot of experimenting and properties. In fact, if you go to palettes, you have a search button here. So I'm going to type in the word fingerings. So let's say you're going to try a fingering. You can drag and drop it right hand. Okay. That will be my one fingering. I'll come up there. You can also have it down here. Let's see if it obey. Yeah. So you can do that if you want to, uh, again, palettes, dynamic, everything is all about the palettes. The other thing I didn't get into is certain tools, uh, excuse me, format. There's a lot you can do in here with text tools. Um, you can expand with transposition. I just would make sure that you save your uh, original download. That's what I'm trying to say. I forgot one thing and I apologize if you want to navigate your score. All right, to go from one measure to an X, what you're going to do is I have it down. I have that highlighted for you. Press command F. You're going to find go to the bottom. You see find go to and I'm going to type um, 27 and that would be measure 27. And there it is. Let's go to measure 44. That's really good to do that and practice and navigate where you are in the music. All right, hopefully this is helpful. Reach out. Um, I'm very excited about the software. I use it in a lot of my PDFs that I provide. So until next time, keep making music and thank you for your patience because doing these kind of tutorials is a little harder for me because there's just so much to do and I don't want to overload our brains, but I'll leave chapters so you can visit it when you like. Bye for now.